Hello, my name is Diego from the Hit Music Studio, and in this video, I would like to teach you the piano, the tumbao part of We Don't Talk About Bruno. Great song, really cool piano part. Definitely not easy, not a good choice for beginners, but I want to give you almost my best tips so you can become successful at practicing this. So let me mention that in my tutorials, I don't really do what the singer is doing. I don't teach that to play on piano. Don't think that's that productive, but I do teach you the piano or the keyboard part. And I think it's very cool if you learn these parts because you can get a singer and actually play these songs. So let's go there to a close up. I would start this song by giving you a little bit of an exercise. And definitely for this, probably get a notepad pause the video make sure that you write this notes because you are going to have a good amount of tips that i think are going to hopefully be very useful the first thing that i want to tell you is to practice the chords of the song and practice their inversions because you're actually going to be using them inversions is almost flipping a chord and a chord is three notes together so first one c minor c e flat and g uh, second chord of the song is going to be f a flat and c that's an, that's an f, f minor next one we're going to do a g major g b d and last one, we're going to do F, A flat major, A flat, C, and E flat. Now, my suggestion will be to practice this in inversions, which takes the bottom of the, of the chord, bottom note, and put it on, puts it on the other side. The reason is because you're going to be using it. So it's almost might as well get your hands familiar with those changes. And some of them are going to happen right off one after the other. So the first one, for Apple C minor, we're going to take the bottom note, C, put it on the other side. So now we're going to do E flat, G, and C. Then we're going to take the bottom note, which was an E flat, and put it on the other side. Now we have G, C, and E flat. And then we're going to do C, E flat, and G again up here. So the goal is to be able to do this. And I would practice that with all of the chords. Second one is F minor. So I would do F, F, A flat, C. Then C, A flat, C, F. Followed by C, F, A flat. And lastly, getting back to the first one that we started, F, A flat, C, but a little bit higher. So one more time. So if you do that, your hands are going to start getting almost familiar to exactly what I'm going to be teaching you now, that it's not super easy and it does require a little bit of changes. So definitely keep that in mind because I think if you practice by doing this exercise first, it's going to increase your chances of being successful at playing the song. I think I forgot to mention, but I'm going to divide this video into multiple parts just to make it a little bit shorter. But uh, I definitely want to teach you in this first part, the introduction and the main tumbao that the song has. So if I if we can go here to the beginning of the tumbao, the main thing is counting and counting is a little bit time consuming, but it's really, really helpful to make sure that you're actually playing things where they go. So the first thing that we're going to do here, it's play uh, this series of notes. It's C, E flat, G, C, F. A flat and this chord. Now that chord is going to go say when you say eight and I want you to count very steadily from one to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now on the, on the seven, that when you say seven, we don't have a note. So it literally goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is part of la, how Latin rhythms work. You don't play in every single one of those uh, beats or subdivisions. But it's important to count them all when you're stitching something like this to be able to play it correctly. So one more time, I will say this is the first bar of the tumbao. I will practice this until this is correct and clean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, after that, you're going to have two more chords. Uh, B, D, G, sorry, G, B, D. Then uh, A flat, C, F and A flat C F again. The trick with those next ones is that they are all technically syncopated. So if I give you this second bar and show you how to count it, you're gonna play this chord when you say two, and this one when you say four and eight. So if I count to one, on one I don't play anything because it's coming from the other bar, it, was, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I will practice just that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just make sure that your mind and your fingers are coming out at the correct time. This is very time consuming, but it's really, really effective. So it's almost like you're going to have to slow down things, be very, very almost like put your mind to what you're doing. But I can tell you, you do this 10, 20, 30 times in a row and you get it. And you're almost like your minds can take off and do it in autopilot, which is awesome because that's the easiest way that it's going to always sound correct. So uh, if I play that whole section, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
5678. Definitely, I think you, if you're having trouble doing that, slow it down. Slow it down until it's almost ridiculously slow, but you're still playing the notes correctly. And this is where the notepad comes in. Write all the notes and make sure that you know, okay, in this note, in the number three, I'm playing this key and in the number six, I'm playing this key just to make it easier on yourself. Now, let me show you the left hand. The left hand, it's a little bit more tricky. There's more notes, uh, I guess, on, on odd places kind of thing, but uh, the notes are not super complicated. So uh, the notes are going to be C, G, F, A flat, G, B, A flat, F and A flat again. Now the trick with this is to count it because you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as you can see, I'm playing in a lot of even numbers, and the even numbers in music can feel a little more like almost more jarring to play them, but it's part of the process. So one more time, I'll show you the left hand very slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would do that once again, very, very slowly until like, you can almost not have to think too much about it. It's coming out right. Now uh, for the next part, and this is where it gets very interesting, is putting that together with both hands. It definitely, I think seeing this visually is of course a lot easier. But uh, one thing that for me is, is uh, interesting is once you do that enough, you can almost let go of counting. So I'm gonna try to do it very slow. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that came out correctly. If I keep on doing it, I would try to do it many, many times. So it comes out correctly more than once. Now, the next part, and this is almost like cool about the song, a little minor change is that on the second repetition, almost everything is the same, but there's a little thing that changes on the right hand. So let me show you that. And the thing is, it's cool that that changes because it almost makes the, the, the tumbao flow a little bit better because it's not exactly a copy of it. So let me show you what it is. It's on the right hand, the left hand stays the same, but we're gonna, instead of doing a BDG and GBD, we're actually gonna do BDG and DGB. So the chord almost goes higher to, I think, give it a little bit of a different flavor. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one more time, I will practice that extremely slowly. Do it with both hands correct. That is the bulk of the tumbao. You can rewind the video to when I played it there with a little track to make sure that you can get it correctly. It does repeat many times in the song. There's a couple of other parts that we'll cover in part two, but let me show you when you get out of the tumbao, uh, the tumbao is almost like part, let's say A, part B with that minor change goes back to part A one time, and then it goes to this, which is the A flat major chord do, done in this rhythm. Uh, finishing with a G7. G7 is four keys, but I'm uh, playing the G with my left hand. So in my right hand, I'm doing B, D, F. So one more time, that rhythm with a short release, and that gets you back into the repetition. So beautiful tumbao and definitely challenging. I've seen my, my students struggle a little bit on it, but hopefully this video can make you and them uh, successful at playing. I definitely want to encourage you to count out loud. And I see this a lot. People think that they can count in your mind for some reason. And I'm not a neuroscientist, but it, there's a big change. If you just count in your mind, there's something that engages differently. So if you actually say the numbers out loud, it really increases your chances of doing it correctly. And even though it's, it takes effort, you're going to be more like quickly successful at playing this type of patterns. So I really hope this video helped you. We're definitely going to do part two and part three, so we can cover mainly almost the whole song, but we definitely want to encourage you to visit our main website, thehitmusicstudio.com to see if any of our programs will be a good fit for, for you guys. Uh, and definitely we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.